We don't always like to be negative, but we have to do it sometimes. So Tim, start us off with a player that you think is just a little too pricey. Yeah, the first guy I'm going with is Miles Sanders. Now, I thought he would be a good buy going into the season because I thought there would be a little bit less uh, less energy around his name, but it, it hasn't really seemed to impact his ADP the way I expected it to. So he's currently going 54 overall RB21. And as much as RB21 makes sense, our uh, overall 54 does not for me. Uh, last year he was RB15, so he had a good season. But things that we're looking at, like the la- his – Four seasons in the NFL, he's had 17 games, 12 games, 12 games, and 16 games. So he hasn't really had the greatest track record of staying healthy. And the reason that that contributed last year for him to have a, that many games played is because his highest snap share of the season was 74%, where the rest of the games he basically hovered around 60% or 50%, somewhere in there. So him not even getting like the bulk of the snaps kind of limits the ceiling. Now, I know he's going into a different offense, but that offense is not going to be as high-powered as Philadelphia either. So there's there's situations in which we're having trade-offs, but are the trade-offs actually beneficial to your long season, long-term season success? I am not sure. And I also believe, like I said, that I just think there's, there's just so many more higher upside players around him. So at 54, guys behind him, um, Watson, uh, Swift, Lawrence, uh, Darren Waller, Javante, you know, Mike Williams, all these guys that I think that, are just better oper- options for you to go after. Because if you're leaning on Miles Sanders as being your RB2, I don't think that's a situation you want to be in. I think you're going to be disappointed more weeks than not, especially if he ends up getting injured. And we're hoping that he gets that 74% snap share in Carolina because they're not going to be scoring as much. So he's going to need as much in terms of volume as he can get, which then I think works towards his detriment. Yeah, I think with Miles Sanders, it's just going to come down to what kind of receiving work does he get, right? There aren't any really proven or high-profile wide receivers there. I mean, by proven, Adam Thielen obviously has has had a fantastic career, but he's not who he once was. They don't have a whole ton of options to marshal down, chart down. And you might say, well, they're going to lean on Miles Sanders. This team could be playing from behind in some of their games. And if Miles Sanders is involved in the pass game, he could not be as safe in terms of volume week to week as people think he is. And we really don't want our RB2, especially when we're taking him at pick 50 to be a guy who some weeks might finish as an RB3, other weeks maybe he finishes as a higher RB2. I don't want that. I want a guy with a little bit more of a floor who can be punch weeks based on where I'm taking him here at pick 50. And generally speaking, in this range of the draft, it's just a bunch of backs where you 100% can paint me the picture of why they through volume could be very good fantasy options. But the problem is, is I don't think it's a guarantee. I don't think everything really lines up perfect. Maybe the offenses aren't necessarily that elite. Maybe the pass passing volume isn't necessarily proven to go their way. And you're taking them in range of draft, just like Tim said, where there's really high profile upside wide receivers. Maybe the end of these kind of, uh, breakout quarterbacks like a Justin Fields or a Justin Herbert, or you know, it's after the Brees Halls, the Kenneth Walkers that we like, and then it's this group of players, and that's where you're gonna have to take a player like Miles Sanders. And I'm just gonna throw right in there with Miles Sanders, two running backs that I think lump right in there with guys you should fade at ADP with Alexander Madison and Damian Pierce because they both go, uh, right now they both go within. Th- three or four picks either way of Miles Sanders. They're the two running backs that kind of hug him. So I just don't love either of these guys in terms of their passing work either. I think really that's the big separator. Obviously with Damian Pierce, we saw that he was out there for the majority of the snaps in the preseason. He was out there under the majority of the third downs. And maybe that could be something that he has improved and worked upon. But at the end of the day, it is a rookie running, a rookie quarterback in an offense that has a pretty dismal, uh, wide receiver room really unproven and they also might just not win a whole lot of football games and if he's not out there passing the catches or catching the passes sorry guys then i don't necessarily see why we are spending pick 47 on damian pierce right they brought in Devin singletary and he might not have done it in the preseason but it is just preseason right maybe they want to get him on his own sets maybe they just want to work out pierce and see a little bit more of has he taken that step forward in this off season or do we really need to use singletary like we inv- like we brought him in possibly to do and Singletary, uh, you can go back on a Cubs card and find a little bit more in-depth rants about Damian Pierce versus Devin Singletary. We've talked on both of these players in length, and it's just Devin Singletary found his way on the field in the third downs. He was very capable in that. Buffalo really trusted him that. He's kind of got brick hands. He's not a good pass catcher, but he runs a ton of routes because he's just out there 
and he can protect the quarterback and he's serviceable enough that you can lob him the ball. And Alexander Madison is kind of just the same argument, right? The receiving work for Dalvin really disappeared last year. He wasn't even type the type of guy that we wanted to be. And it took away the ceiling that Dalvin Cook had. And the way this offense, despite their pace of play going way up, the touchdowns weren't even there for Dalvin Cook either. The offense just has really revolved around this passing game. They've really cemented that drafting Jordan Addison, trading for TJ Hawkinson. Uh, the offense runs in and around what Jefferson can do. And it's not necessarily leaning on the run game the way it used to. The offense used to run through Dalvin Cook and then build around there thereafter. And it's just not the same offense. Kevin O'Connell, the pace of play is up, which is good. But the running back usage is just completely different. And I don't love that usage for Alexander Madison. Now, he might have 225 carries on the table for him, but not all volume is created equal. He was coming off his two least efficient seasons as a runner. And when you are the relief back on a high-powered offense, you would like to see those efficiency metrics be really high, right? We like Khalil Herbert as a runner. We don't overplay his yards per carry, but when you're in the fives, 5.9 or whatever he was per carry, you would hope that the relief back is a little bit more efficient. Maybe not that crazy efficient like Khalil was, but we saw this year after year where, you know, you might get 4.5 yards per carry out of Zeke, and then you're going to get five yards per touch out of power. And people are like, well, power is better. It's like, well, you can have that argument, but I don't think using yards per carry is necessarily that. He's coming in in situations where he's set up to succeed, and that's where Alexander Madison should, should have been coming in, and he just wasn't effective. He just wasn't that guy. In his big games when Cook was out, he was playing against softer defenses, and it's a, even that is a very short sample size. I'm not going to extrapolate that sample size out as well past the five games and say, well, if this was a season, this is where he would be because when you have a player go out either in a game or for just one game, or maybe in a short stretch, when you bring the backup in, you're not going to completely change your offense. You're going to probably just patch in a guy to sort of work that role. And a lot of times that can lead to a player who isn't as talented getting elite volume for a very short stretch. So when the, when the danger, when you extrapolate that over a season, use it to project a brand new season, they've had an entire off season to prepare around a game plan that is Alexander Madison, not top five running back in the league, Dalvin Cook, like they had for the past prior seasons. So it is, it's a, just a different look when you have a longer opportunity to prepare with your personnel it's just a lesson in general that i think is really important to take a look at because we see it all the time it's like well this guy when he came in did a great job it's like it just doesn't work like that necessarily same thing with quarterbacks if they come into another quarterback system and they just don't do well it's like well the whole offense was built around somebody else right they came in and if they didn't do well, again, it also wasn't built around them. So there's both sides of the coin there in, tards, in terms of using a really small sample size. So that's kind of my take there with Damian Pierce and Alexander Madison is that I don't trust the touchdown upside for either player. I don't trust the receiving work for either player. And you're taking them right where Tim said around Miles Sanders where you're passing on all of these proven players. TJ Hawkinson, DJ Moore, DeAndre Hopkins, Terry McLaurin, Christian Watson, uh, Drake London, Mike Williams, Darren Waller, Chris Godwin. I don't want... I don't want I don't want anything to do with that. So that's where I stand there as well. Right. I have a couple takes on these guys too that I wanted to share. Is that okay. where we're taking these guys, right? The arguments that you're making, you're making it on Sanders as in volume, right? Then you're making it on Harris that potential uh volume as well as that he's going to be dependent on touchdowns. And then Madison, who we're talking historically how when he got all of these touches against historically bad defenses, he scored points. Okay. That's fine to make those arguments, but not at 54, not at 44, not at 50. We're talking the same types of conditions when we're talking guys like Brian Robinson, you know, guys in the 80s, guys in the, in the 70s. Big difference. We're talking one, two, three, four rounds of difference where when you're making those those conditions or those arguments, that's not a safe thing to do so early. No, it's not, especially when you can just like those guys, you can take Dave Montgomery. 30 picks later and yeah I, I probably prefer david montgomery straight up but 